Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Antimatter Chemistry. Thank you again for all of the support. We've just hit 12,000 subscribers. I really want to thank you so much for subscribing and for liking and for commenting and for doing all the good things. And let's just begin today's episode by explaining what's behind me. I decided that we don't need the cursed dirt farm in the nether anymore since the plan was to have a zombie pigment spawner anyway. So that is what this is basically and we're gonna decorate it the same but later. I'm not gonna do it in today's episode because I don't have enough time. And as you can also see very darkly if I turn on my night vision, you can see that we have Xnet again. I removed random utilities because it is not necessary anymore as I figured out what the issue was with mobs spawning on top of uh, blocks over here. It was the dragon egg. If you put this, it ignores spawn conditions and the spawn condition also means that it the block above doesn't prevent spawning because that would be the spawner ignoring that spawn condition. So if we had fans, it wouldn't be an issue because we would just put like a fan on uh, somewhere and uh, blow them off. But then again, with the fan, we can't have a nice like pillar structure thing like we have in here. So the only thing that we do have is this redstone proxy, which when it's dark, you don't really see it that much and it's not going to bother me at all. It would be lovely if I could facade it, but actually, uh, we probably don't even need to use Xnet anymore. We can go back to structural ducts, and I think mobs won't be able to spawn on there. I actually want to try that. Do I have them in here? Uh, I do not. Okay, I'm going to go grab some structural ducts, and we can uh, change it up and see if that works, because that even means that we don't require power as well on top. Okay, the structural duct still spawns mobs on top, so let's see if the facade is gonna do any any of it good and if it doesn't we're just gonna go back to xnet but I'm gonna try and do this because this still leaves like a little bit of a gap on top of the spawner and I kind of can't fill that in otherwise actually I think the servo does output to a block directly right so we could do that and then that block would prevent the spawning because I think this should do a good enough of power to power that I think let's see Please spawn. Maybe? No? Okay, fine. Yeah, it's not gonna. Okay. So let's try to duct the relay. Uh, we can remove that one. Wrong button. There we go. And we're gonna try that, 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 and that. But I don't think it will work. It might still spawn them on top. Are you even outputting the right stuff? Did I mess up this? No, this is set up. That's stored input. Oh, did I have to did I not set an output on this? Ah, output. Right? Power. I might have had it wrong the first time. Okay, this spawns, and I'm gonna sit here a little bit and see if they spawn on top. It's been a couple minutes and I think it's fine. So we can add the spire on top to cover everything up. We don't really need this uh, hole in here, but we're just gonna leave it be, I think. Um, it is gonna provide a little bit of light, but I think all of that will get blocked in. Actually, we can just do this, not to worry about it. There we go. That should block all the light, hopefully. Uh, and we can uh, set up the spire that's gonna cover everything up, coming up to here, for example, maybe going up like so, and then maybe a little bit down here and a little bit more here, and then we can just do a bit more of just random placing this everywhere. Maybe a bit more here, and then we need some covers. All sides here, <coughs> like so. Um, does that look okay? One more here. There we go. I think that looks fine. We could even add some nether brick uh, fences to maybe break it up a little bit, or maybe slabs and stairs could also do it, but I think it's good for the time being. We can decorate it later. It's doing its job, and it's doing its thing, and it's good. Wonderful. I decided to add the inside spire for the witches, since this one is mostly going to be built, I think, out of stone and cobble and maybe some, like, andesite or something to break it up as well, and I still need to figure out what I'm going to do with the floor. Possibly we can put in redstone blocks as kind of like the designating block of what the the drops are for uh, and maybe uh, Glowstone is gonna provide too much light in there. 
uh, we could potentially do just like one chiseled bit of glowstone somewhere in the middle or something. Uh, and I could go crazy with the, ch the chiseling bits, but if I do go crazy with chiseling bits, then we probably won't get much done. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to leave it at normal building blocks, plus it's less laggy, and if people start playing on this server as well, uh, we are not going to have uh, fun times with all of the lag everywhere. So I think it's fine. I decided to make this magical snow globe in between episodes and it only requires a nether star and a bit of few random items and you need to activate this. It, it must travel to any of the seven following biome types. So it needs to go end forest hills, blah, 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 all the way to the end. And we kind of cannot get all of those biomes with the regular dimensions that we have access to now. We need to get into the Dimension Builder and all of RF tools if we want to get to any of the other biomes because the Deep Dark, as somebody mentioned in the comments, should have different biomes, but it's all planes. And I assume the moth author took that into account because getting a dimensional, uh, this shape card quarry, uh, getting this, uh, you need Draconium, which requires dimensional shards. And if you could activate this guy, then you don't need to do any of the dimension mining. You can just do this with the quantum quarry. Uh, I don't know if the quantum quarry gets you um, the dimensional ore. We might still need to run it, uh, run the builder and the uh, shape card quarry in it in a in a di separate dimension to uh, get that going. But for that, we need a proper power setup, and we're nowhere near that. And I don't think it's time that we get into a quarry just yet because I want to sort out applied energistics at least a little bit more. Currently, we're only running this simple energy acceptor, which is making us run eight channels, which six of them we have filled. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to redo this. We wanted to hide the drawers anyway and do a bit of a better job uh, of doing this. So... The easiest solution that I see is that we built another part of the base, which is going to be um, basically we're going to have a middle cube, which is going to house our ME controller. And then we are going to go in all six directions and we're going to set up boxes of sorts that are going to store different bits of our base. So different machines and all of that good stuff. And we can do different sized boxes to make it look really cool and weird, I think because that was kind of going to be my idea. So let's start off by making a bit of ME controllers because these require engineering processors. How many do I have? I have 26. That should be fine. Uh, we do need pure Fluix for this. So we need the Fluix seed. Uh, how much do I have of Fluix? Uh, I have a few. That's definitely not going to be enough. Let's get a bit of this. Uh, how are we for Certus Quartz? We have a little bit. So let's get a couple of snacks and get that sh charged up. And also this guy cooked up. So we need the energetic infuser. You can take these and get them charged up. That should be good. Oh, it does this work? Okay, so this charges the uh, stuff. Okay, it's fine. Cool. Uh, and then growth chamber. Uh, you get this. Uh, do we have any more acceleration cards? We do not. Let's make a couple. There we go. We can toss them in here, and this will grow a little bit quicker now. So we can also pulverize the Fluix crystals that we got here uh, into some Fluix dust. And as soon as we have, let's say, a stack of charred certus, we can toss that with a stack of quartz and redstone, get more fluix, pulverize some more of it, and get all of the things that we need for our ME controller. We also need some skystone for this, and that is for lithium and for silicon dioxide, and we can easily get lithium by just dissolving lithium ingots that we are getting from, uh, from mining. And we can just do this and then toss two stacks of you, two stacks of you, and then grab all of these in here. Uh, so each stack makes, I think, 16. Yeah, it's going to make 32. I think um, a stack is going to make 16. Let's make two stacks, which is the perfect amount that I brought here. There we go. That should make us two stacks of Skystone. Once it's done, we're going to cook it up, and then we can make ourselves some ME controllers. 
I totally forgot you can make the Fluix Crystals in the Crystal Growth Chamber just by tossing in all the items. Uh, and that makes it much easier than tossing things into the water. Uh, I am also making a little bit more of the printed engineering circuits to make a bit more of the engineering processor because each P2P tunnel that I want to use requires one engineering processor, so that should provide us with plenty. I also made enough smart cable to get us started. I think we also need some dense cable. Uh, I am gonna... Yeah, this is gonna be expensive because it's covered cable and I already used everything to make the smart cable and I... I wish you could be able to just directly upgrade uh, your smart cable to the dense because, yeah, that, that's just to color it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't directly upgrade it. Okay, it's fine. We'll, we'll worry about the dense cable a little, little, little bit later uh, or maybe I'll make some more stuff in between here. I have just gotten a bit of Fluix, so we should be able to do it, actually. How did I think about it? If we make a few more of these, make a couple of stacks... And then let's do covered cable, two stacks. And then we do dense covered cable like so. That should make us half a stack. And then like that, that should get us half a stack of dense smart cable. That will at least get us started a little bit. But I just want to set up this first of all. So let's get a few more P2Ps here. Um, let's get a total of 16 for now. <clears throat> So the way I want to set up these ME controllers is we're going to do a basically a 3x3 with a hole in the middle and then a 3x3 like this. So basically a 3x3 with holes in the middle everywhere like so. And then we're going to put P2P tunnels like so on seven of the spots. And then one of the spots is going to be a dense cable. And then the rest here are going to be smart cables like so. Uh, we could potentially hook it into the middle here as well, but this middle part is what I want to basically drag along. And if we grab some anchors that I think I should have here, you can see how you basically link this off. So basically cable anchors prevent the cable connection from happening. So if we just break this one and add the cable anchor there, and if we do this, this means that when this is running, so if we place, let's say, power here, uh, this is going to output seven channels over here to all of the P2P tunnels. And then this one is going to be the main line that goes to the top of the base. And then we can do the exact same thing on all sides here. And the cables won't connect, which is cool. So the only interesting thing that I need to figure out is power. Because I have to sneak in the power here in the middle. And we can do a P2P tunnel for power. But we would need some sort of way of inputting the power. And the P2P tunnel doesn't connect to a dense cable. So um, this might be an interesting way to... <laughs> I don't know how I get how to get power. I could replace like one of these blocks with the power cell. Or we could sneak it in and the bottom and not have the bottom part of the base or run a cable downstairs differently. Because um, we don't have conduits, right? We don't have Ender I.O. Because then I could use Ender I.O. conduits and I could run a dense conduit here in the middle. Uh, I don't think we can achieve that here. <laughs> I didn't think through for power, so... Hmm, maybe we set this up differently? I found a future solution for this problem. For the time being, we're just gonna stick the power cell on one side of the base that we're not gonna build just yet, and it, that's gonna provide the power. But in the future, we're gonna have a dense energy cell here in the middle, and we're gonna hook up one of these wireless crystals from Draconic Evolution directly to the dense energy cell, and that should hopefully power up and power the rest of this. I have not tested it, but I hope it's going to work. So we're just going to put all our cards on that. Uh, otherwise, we're going to figure it out a different way. Okay, so this is going to be our new base for the time being. <laughs> well, forever, pretty much for these series. This is going to be much better than, than this janky old thing. Even this was better than what we had outside, but this is going to be even better. So the ME controller is going to go in here, and then we're going to have a tunnel going off in this direction from here and then the same thing going on all four sides or 
all six sides, we should say. Uh, and what we can then do is we can have like tinier, smaller tunnels, maybe like three by three. If we have rooms that are a little bit smaller, we can hook in into any part of this. And we're going to make this basically at least the tunnels that go outside of the ME controller symmetrical. And then we can hook into all of the different edges and spots and make this look a little bit like a janky old boxy build of sorts. I don't know if I can explain it correctly, but basically what we're going to have is we're going to have dense cables here in the middle that are going to provide us with 32 channels on each side here on top. And depending on how many P2P tunnels we need, we can ru either run a dense cable directly down or we can run a just a smart cable. I think we're going to have two dense cables like so, so we can see what uh, amount of channels we're using on each one of these. We could potentially even do that for our P2P tunnels. We could, that would require this room to be uh, much, much bigger. But uh, what I think we'll do is we're going to have the uh, dense cable on the other side of the P2P tunnel. And we can kind of uh, remember or mark out or do whatever with the P2Ps to remember how many channels we have. Because if you have the P2P tunnel directly on the ME controller like this, you can't see the amount of channels that you've already used. But the P2P tunnel that let's say is on the other end of the base, if we attach a dense cable here, we should be able to see how many channels we hook into this dense cable and that way we can see how much channels we have left. So that should be fine. So now we need a set up like this. So we need a few of these cable anchors going around this dense cable like so. And then we need some smart cable going around like this on all six sides. I could just regularly dye the cables with some color here, but I want to have a color applicator because I don't use this enough. I think I made the energy cell, which doesn't want to go in here, but we can do that and then also grab the matter condenser here. Uh, and for this one, we're going to need our cobble gen. I think that should be the easiest solution. <clears throat> I think we need to hook you up to Planet Logistics power bits, right? Oh, no, actually we don't. Okay. Uh, so we can set it up up top then. Okay, we're also going to need a, uh, a cell with, or a part, I should say, uh, is not storage. It's storage. What is it? Components are these one, two, three. Let's make a 4k. That should be enough, I think. So if we smack you in this corner, toss this in here and we say condense into matter balls. And then we put this guy here. Will you automatically output? No, we need to possibly break this, put this guy on the bottom because I think it outputs on the top. And that way we can do this and say condense into items. Yeah, there we go. So this should condense into matter balls. I could, I think the fastest option for this is like a water generator or like uh, the, the water uh, source, this guy from, um, Nuclear craft is the fastest, but basically once we get these matter balls, we can combine them with uh, our pigment and we can then toss them in our color applicator here, uh, which is currently empty. Uh, and it says, I think you just combine it like this in, uh, in the crafting window, I think. So I'm going to wait until I have eight balls and we can test it out. Okay. I'm going to make eight red and then we're also going to make eight blue like so. And let's see, do I just combine you like this? No. Uh, I forget, how do I open this? It says stored energy, zero out of something bytes. I think you open this up like sneak right clicking or something. Um, actually, I remember. We need this guy. And we need to hook you up to AE stuff, power bits. Yeah, there we go. We can then toss this in here. I think that loads it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it works. Okay, and now you can switch between red and blue. Okay, and if we take this guy over to our generator here, and let's say we want the blue channels down here, you can just right click and it paints it uses one of the balls, but it paints. And that way you never need to craft directly smart cable, you can just color it specifically into the color that you need it to be, uh, which is really neato. So eventually we will have a bunch of those matter balls and uh, we can simply uh, dye them up. And I don't, is that, do we have more red? No. Okay. So one per, but it's 
Okay, now it's empty, right? Okay, cool. I have made another set of drawers, this time with a black border, like we had the first time around, and we're gonna set them up over here. So this is gonna be the 11 tall periodic table. It's kind of gonna be centered with the drawer controller as well, because the entire periodic table is only 12 blocks tall, and the drawer controller then adds another block, so it's gonna make it kind of centered, which I think should be fine. So I'm gonna assemble this, and we're gonna move all of these in between episodes. I don't wanna do it again on camera, plus not right now. I'm gonna have some time tomorrow on my day off and I can just do a whole bunch of moving of the drawers and moving of these as well to the new base place. Well, I kind of messed up. This inside part is 17 by 17 and not 19 by 19 like it should be. So that, that drawer should be one block higher because we need a 19 by 19 space. So I need to just tear down a little bit of this and increase it by one block on each side. And I think we have to go up as well, which means that this is gonna be kind of off tilter. So we have to move all of that up by one block as well, I think. Actually, now that I think about it, before we build too much more of this stuff, the drawers need to move back by one, and then I need a wall behind the drawers. So basically, this means that this black stuff that is right here is gonna be the size of the white cube. So I can just tear all of this black down. This is gonna definitely have to move then, because this cube is gonna turn out to be huge. So yeah, all the drawers go back by one blocks, and the cube gets much, much bigger. We now have the general size of the cube here, and I'm playing around with a few designs here on the background. Maybe we do kind of like irregular circle-y bits of sorts, and we could do different types of colors on them as well, maybe. Uh, and if you have any ideas, please do let me know down in the comments. You can also tweet at me on Twitter if you have a picture or something, or you can post it on my Discord as well. I'll see it there too. I think I messed up a little bit yet again. It's not that big of a mess up, but basically the inside of the room would be 19 by 19 if I had the wall here, because if I want to have any more drawers on the wall, they need to be on this wall. And what we need to do is make the room of the inside be 21 by 21, which would mean that it needs to go all the way up to here, right? That's 21, and then we need to extend it to 21, which would be this way all the way over to here. So this would be the center of our room and the center of our cube. So we need to move uh, a couple of the walls, or at least this side, just a bit to the back. And that would mean that this would then be a 21 by 21. So it's not that big of a mess up. So what we can actually do is just remove a few of these like so, and we can then go to the bottom and remove this and this and this. And then we can just do an exchanging gadget and exchange all of this for cobblestone, like so. And we can then just vein mine it, because we cannot vein mine the antimatter, but cobblestone we can. And this just needs to go away, which is simple as so. And then the second side needs to be done the exact same way. And then we can actually make it a fully proper cube thingamabob. If we wanna have everything properly centered, we are gonna need to move the drawers yet again, because this 25 by 25 by 25 cube is gonna be the size of the proper base now, not the 23 or the 21, because if we wanna have the 21 inside, we need the 25 so we can have this go all the way over here to the edge up top. Actually, it's gonna go one block in because we need one block of space really I'm out of antimatter so this is the this is going to be a 23 by 23 and then if we go in here this is the 21 by 21 so this is going to be the inside and this is going to be the wall that covers the drawers that are on this wall if that makes sense so basically all of the drawers have to go in and up by a couple of blocks so I think I'll just get rid of all of the white antimatter that is here by just exchanging it for cobblestone like I did uh, not uh, not too long ago here, so we're just gonna go around. I think I might go grab a bit more cobble because we can easily do that. And everything pretty much here has to go except for the outer layer. So we can just get rid of it and then we can sort out the inside. 
I think it's finally fixed and fixed in a way where it won't make me rebuild it again, I think. So we have the 21 by 21 cube inside and then we have a 23 by 23 gap basically and then the 25 is this white and then this is I think 27 or something the outside. So I rebuilt the uh, power cube of ME here and I kind of colored the cables uh, like a Rubik's cube. And it is uh, the correct way that it should be as a Rubik's Cube, I think. So uh, that looks really cool. Uh, I don't know if you knew, but I do s solve Rubik's Cubes from time to time. I uh, can do it in like 15 seconds or so on average. Um, just a fun fact, if you didn't know. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is either drag a cable through the center down here to the bottom, but we have these wireless connectors from A to stuff, and we're gonna place one right here in the middle, and the other one is gonna go right here. Mm, actually, no, it's gonna go here. Hold on, we're gonna do cabling like this. This will be the top, so we'll put it like right here, and then we're gonna hook up the smart cable like so. And if need be, as I said, we can change this to dense cable if we need more than eight P2P tunnels on any other sides. So we're going to then take a P2P tunnel and we're going to put it right here somewhere. Actually, we can put this guy down here lower. Uh, we can do this and then put the smart cable that we want to hook into, which is one of the yellow ones. So we're going to grab our color applicator, select yellow. We're going to paint this yellow toss the P2P tunnel on, and then I need to go make a card. We need this guy, the memory card. Cool. And what we can then do is, I believe we just shift right click this guy, and we create a copy of that P2P tunnel. We can then come over here on top, and we can then right click this, for example, here on this corner, uh, and it's linked, it says. It says unlinked, the device online. Did I do the wrong thing? Shift right click. Oh yeah, of course it's not linked. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's fine. We need to do one of these. So we shift right click to there and then we shift right click to here. So they should be connected. Does it say how much power it's using? It doesn't. Can we click here? 3,000 3, RF per tick, I think. So, um, is that really is that using that much? Normally it shows you energy 3.25, 3.2. I don't know how much my petrified fuel generators make, but this should be draining my power super quickly, I think. Well, these are 800 each, so that's 1,600, 3,200. I mean, I'm making more than enough power for the time being, but it would only run that. Uh, it'll only run, does this really take like 3000 RF to just transfer it down a couple of blocks? Seriously? Because if I break this, right, and we click on the cable here, we can see the power drop down. I think it was using like 170 something RF per tick normally. That is really that expensive? I mean, I assume a quantum ring is less expensive than this. But that's insane. I mean, I could go tweak probably this in the configs, because it's... To transfer it, like, 20 blocks. Or something. Yeah, 20 blocks-ish. 3000 RF. I mean, once we're making, like, a million RF or something per tick, it's not gonna be an issue. But for the time being, with our petrified fuel generators, I don't think we can afford this. But for the sake of just me showing you how this works, we're going to bind these together again. Hello, like so. And this should now be linked. Yep. So what we can then do is we can grab a smart cable. Well, we're going to put a dense cable right here. Uh, and then we can, let's say, dig into this guy. We don't even need to, f I mean, we can just facade this, so it should be fine. I don't think we should get any weird glitches, but if we do, we can potentially run the cable in the back there. But we're going to do just something like this. 
in the floor here. Cool. And then I need to go make a storage bus. Like so. And we can smack this guy right here. And for example, if we just toss in, let's say, this piece of cobblestone, right? And here we would need our uh, terminals. So we can do something like this, for example. And we can put in the crafting terminal. We would need the fluid terminal, let's say, on top there. And then we need an interface and a pattern terminal. So we can put the interface here, pattern here. Like so, we can cover all of this up, like so. And then we can just facade everything later. But basically, it means that we can now see inside of all of the drawers, even though this isn't uh, directly connected to that, um, well, directly via cable connected. So if that is going to be super expensive, the other option that we have is to run the cable all the way down from there and then put the P2P tunnel somewhere on the bottom here or somewhere on the inside, let's say. And then we can do kind of like a three by three. I don't think we need to do anything bigger than that. Uh, and we can put, well, we would have to do probably this big of a inside thing, which kind of, if it goes all the way up, it will obscure the, um, the per periodic table, which uh, looks majestic, by the way. And uh, we'll see. For the time being, I think I'll just disconnect this and I'll decide in between episodes uh, what we're gonna do. We can probably look into some better power generation in the next episode, maybe making either a fission reactor or starting to work on our, uh, on the rainbow gen, maybe. Because uh, the rainbow gen requires a whole bunch of things. If we look at generators, we have a whole bunch of generators that need to be automated and then you need to like trigger them a little bit at a time just to trigger the rainbow gen when you need it. But this makes, I think, like 25 million RF per tick, which is insane. So uh, we can automate slime with either the... Um, hold on, slime blocks. No, I need to find the other slime. But we can automate slime, either spawner or phytogenic insulator to grow slime. This enchantment generator, we have the enchantment factory, which we can just run books through, I think. Or there's also some other options I think you can use. Yeah, you can use a fish farm to farm enchanted bows and stuff. You can use that. Uh, and we have the, uh, I think it's aquatic entangler thing. This guy from, um, from thermal, or there's, I think, a fisher. Yeah, resources fisher uh, that works as well. And then you need death generator, it's rotten flesh or bones or something that we're getting. Frosty is super simple glacial precipitator. Halitosis is the complicated one. We would need to run the simulation chamber with the ender dragon module through that and then a loot fabricator to get the dragon's breath because this requires dragon's breath to run. Uh, then we need the nether star generator, which is the, the thing that we can't get right now because we need singularities. And for that, we need the Neutronium Compressor. And for that, we need an Extreme Crafting Table. And we need to get into Draconic Evolution. So um, that's not going to happen right now, at least. And we would need Yttrium Singularities, which this is made by separating platinum or gold. We have plenty of gold. That is simple to do. We need 5,000 of it. And then Redstone, we have a bunch of as well. So in terms, it's not difficult. It's just gated. Uh, explosive generator, TNT gunpowder. Uh, this just runs sticks, I think. Pink, we can dye something pink or grow like pink flowers or something. Uh, we can probably do, or apparently arsenic sulfide. Like there's there's ways to do this. Uh, potion generator, we can do water bottles, I believe. Ender generator, pearls, which we'll get from an enderman spawner. Heated redstone is just lava and redstone, I think which we have lava fabricators and stuff, magmatic lava again, culinary, just some sort of food which we can grow, and furnace is just um, wood, and also the survival is just wood. So a few farms needed to automate that, but we can get started by maybe setting up some death generators next episode inside of, let's say, the deep dark, or we just put them a little bit away somewhere here and chunk load the chunk, uh, just so that we don't get the death effect. Uh, which could be nice, I think.
But all of that is gonna have to wait until next episode, so I want to thank you all so much for watching, thank you for all of the support. If you do truly enjoy the videos, make sure you hit that like button, it really helps me out. And you can also subscribe to get notified of when new videos go live, you can also support me on Patreon as well, link in the description. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one, bye bye.